In this video, I want to talk about some Active Directory basics because you're going to see Active Directory in this exam in many forms. Now, Active Directory is the directory service that is used in Microsoft Server Technologies. It's been this way since Windows 2000, so it's been around 12, 13 years now. So Microsoft's going to make an assumption on this exam that you've used Active Directory and you're familiar with it. If that's not true in your case, or if you don't deal with Active Directory on a fairly regular basis in your job, I would strongly recommend, once again, that you go out and do a little outside reading, kind of beef up your knowledge and understanding of Active Directory. I'm going to show you a diagram here in a second that will really help you with some terminology, how it's working together. Then I'm going to touch on a few more things on OUs and groups and so forth as we move through the course here to help you get up to speed on it. And so this refresher will help quite a bit, but if this is brand new to you, you need to go do some reading. So now what exactly is a directory service? Well, back when we got this idea of connecting all of our clients together, we realized, wait a minute, we need something to control everybody, and the directory service was the answer to that. It is a set of technologies and functionalities that we use to collect, manage, and maintain detailed information about objects, and more importantly, users, in a network. Now, all this has to be done in a secure, efficiently managed environment, and that is what Active Directory does for us. Now, Active Directory, when it first came out in Windows 2000, was one huge service, and it was somewhat complex and intimidating to work with. And now, as you can see, in Windows Server 2012, Active Directory is implemented as five unique entities. First up is Active Directory Domain Services, or ADDS, Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services, ADLDS, Active Directory Federation Services, ADFS, Active Directory Certificate Services, ADCS, and then Active Directory Rights Management Services, ADRMS. Now, you won't see all of these mentioned on this 70-410 exam. So I'm just going to touch on what you're going to see. We'll deal with the others in the other exam prep courses. Now, let me do you a little diagram here in an animation on Active Directory Basics to help you get your head around what's going on. When you set up and promote your first domain controller, you install a Windows Server 2012 box, you add the Active Directory Domain Services role, and then you follow that up with configuration, you basically promote it to a domain controller. That creates a domain. Now, these are usually represented by triangles. And that domain, think of it as a security fence. And everybody inside that fence is going to have to play by the security rules that are set up in Active Directory. This becomes the root domain. We can create other domains as child domains or parent domains. And then we can connect them. But this is going to be the parent of all future domains right here. Now I can add an additional domain controller to the domain, and then I can group those together in what's called an organizational unit for administrative purposes. Now I can add additional OUs to my domain to group other objects together that might require a little bit different administrative requirements. So notice we have another server in our domain, but it's in a different OU from the original two servers because I have different administrative functionalities on that. Maybe I've got different administrative rights to different people or different groups. Then I have my client machines in their own organizational unit. Now, I don't want to go too far too fast, but I can also apply group policy objects to these OUs. And so the objects inside that OU picks up whatever the settings that group policy is enforcing. Then I can use sites. And I can use a site to group objects independent of the domain or the OUs. And usually, this connects down to the physical network underlying this logical Active Directory design. And I can use that to group together, usually, computers that share slow network connections so that they will try to communicate with each other first before going outside the site because they're having to reach over slow connections to those other locations. So I can add an additional domain controller to join this domain, or that additional domain controller can create a child domain. 
Notice there is an explicit trust set up between those domains. And so now I have a domain controller in each of my two domains. Or that domain controller could have also created a new forest. So that's kind of the way to think about what's going on with domain controllers, Active Directory, domains, organizational units. It's a lot to get if it's brand new to you. If you've been around a while, this should be old hat. But you will see questions about certain aspects of this that assume that you understand this level of functionality with Active Directory.